my name is Stephen Roberts, and welcome to this presentation on the philosophy of Stoicism. In this section, I will go over what Stoicism is, and many of our follow-on speakers will delve into the modern practical application and relevance that the philosophy of Stoicism can play, not only in, the develop in, in your everyday life, but especially practical for the development of resilience in military personnel. Many of you may have encountered or heard about Stoicism. It resides in writings such as the Serenity Prayer, clickbait presentations, and online life hacks, and with online personalities. The Stoics were an inspiration for Enlightenment thinkers and modern sports coaches such, such as Nick Saban's process. But it is also deeply ingrained in Western philosophy. It has permeated our culture, religion, and way of life. Many hear Stoic statements and recognize a strong philosophical kinship to a way of life that feels ingrained in the way we live. We hear sayings like embrace the suck and suck it up, and know deep down that the tough parts of life just cannot be avoided. For those that serve and have served in the military, this is often painfully evident. The realities of service in combat environments and dealing with life-altering physical and mental injuries are a common part of the modern warrior's mental calculus. But the reality is that without a strong philosophical core and the continued development of resilience, this initial philosophical understanding can become shallow and meaningless. So what is Stoicism? If you could put Stoicism into a single sentence, it would be the methodology for living life skillfully. Quite simply, Stoicism is a practical philosophy for life, and a practical philosophy for mental and emotional resilience. It is a guidebook on how to deal with anger, stress, fear, and anxiety. It teaches one how to work and deal with adversity, and how to attain disciplined positive action. It is a philosophy that lays out the intellectual foundation for the real-world impacts of negative emotion, so that one may build a framework of healthy emotions, healthy growth, and healthy action. It is at its core accepting how the world operates and where humans fit within that world. It provides an outline for how to function, act, and comprehend one's role in order to live life well. So what makes Stoic, Stoic philosophy practical? The most effective way in which Stoicism is practical is that it is a philosophy focused on personal development and a drive towards personal excellence. Stoic philosophy provides time-tested and actionable direction on implementing a plan for self-improvement and training a resilient mind. Many of these ancient Stoic models have informed the development of modern cognitive behavioral therapy models, widely recognized as the only non-medicinal intervention with tangible results for psychological improvement. Cognitive behavioral therapy strategies focus on the ability to build resilience to negative emotional stimuli by changing thought patterns. It provides a methodology for continuous self-improvement, discipline, and direction. Thus, providing a framework for a disciplined life able to adapt to curveballs. Stoicism is not the common trope of a person capable of dealing with the world devoid of emotions. Quite the opposite, the Stoics pointed out that emotions were inevitable and natural. The Stoics would say that emotions are involuntary reflexes that stem from generally predetermined mental conditions or positions. The problems come in where we have not truly accepted proper judgments about events which lead to harmful emotions, or when thought is a slave to emotions and desires. So it is proper to grieve at the loss of a loved one, child, or friend. What is not right is to have grief cripple you and have a permanent impact on your life. In order to start, we must first understand where Stoicism came from. Stoicism is a Socratic philosophy that was founded in ancient Greece. 
also referred to as a Hellenistic philosophy. The lineage of Stoicism comes directly from Socrates. In fact, Stoics would say that Stoicism was the most accu accurate portrayal of Socrates' philosophy in action. Socrates is obviously known as a founder of Western philosophy. In fact, philosophy timelines are generally recognized as Socrates being the marker, either as pre- or post-Socratic. Socrates was also a warrior and soldier. Serving as a hoplite during the Peloponnesian War, we know that he was active in combat in multiple battles, and his valor was mentioned by secondary sources. The hoplite was a citizen soldier, much like the Army National Guard, who served primarily with shields and spears in formations called the phalanx. The combat in a phalanx was extremely personal and violent. It is hard not to believe that a lot of Socrates' philosophical framework was formed by having to deal with the atrocities experienced on the battlefield. From Socrates, Stoicism's direct line is from the Cynics. Stoicism was founded in the 3rd century BC by Zeno of Sidian. Stoicism became quite popular throughout Rome and Greece throughout the 3rd century and then underwent a significant decline in the 4th century. Stoic virtue ethics, along with Aristotelian ethics, became foundational Western philosophical theory on virtue ethics. Zeno was originally a shipping merchant who specialized in the purple dye, Tyrian purple. The dye was manufactured by extracting it from a shellfish that lived deep in the Mediterranean and was processed by hand milking the dye from thousands of these shellfish. The process was labor intensive and extremely expensive. In fact, in order to procure the dye, Zeno spent his life savings, and on his voyage to bring it to market, his ship sank, losing everything. After his shipwreck, and trying to figure out what to do with himself, Zeno ended up in Athens, and while visiting a bookstore in Athens, found the philosophy of Socrates. Looking to expand his knowledge of this philosophy, Zeno ended up studying under the Athenian cynic philosopher Crates. As Zeno progressed, some of his philosophical beliefs began to differ from some of the Cynics. From the Cynics, Stoicism adopted the value of virtue and living in alignment with nature. Where the Cynics and Stoics diverged was on the definition of living in accordance with nature. Cynics believed that in living according to nature, one would shun all possession and acceptance of constructs associated with man while the Stoics believed that these constructs were the natural part of human society, and that living in acceptance of them was more conducive to happiness. The Stoics also believed that while possessions or wealth were not to be pursued for happiness, that one did not need to shun possessions or external success. Zeno went on to found and formalize the Stoic school, and began to teach his philosophy in what was called the Stoa Poikil, or Painted Porch. The early school students were called Zenonians, which was later shunned due to the fact that Stoics thought the school would evolve as a personality cult, which would have been contrary to their philosophical teachings. To date, much of ancient Stoicism has been lost to the modern world, but we have the foundational pieces by Epictetus Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, as well as scattered pieces from either Stoics, from other Stoics, and other first-person information from writers such as Cato. Seneca the Younger was a Roman statesman and Stoic philosopher, and the most prolific Stoic author we have to date. His essays and letters cover multiple volumes and are a constant resource for Stoic philosophy. Seneca was also one of the richest men in Rome in his time and was known as an advisor to the Roman Emperor Nero. Seneca was eventually claimed to have been part of a conspiracy to kill Nero and was ordered to commit suicide. Epictetus was born a slave to a wealthy freedman who served as the Emperor Nero's secretary. In fact, Epictetus' name simply means acquired. From an early age, he seemed to have a passion for philosophy 
and was given permission to study under the Stoic philosopher Musonius Rufus. Eventually he was freed and lived a simple life with a constant limp from having his leg intentionally broken by his master. Epictetus eventually founded his philosophical school, and his book Discourses was a dictation by one of his students, Arian, from lectures by Epictetus to his students. Marcus Aurelius was the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher which probably most truly represented the idea that Socrates put forward as the philosopher king. Marcus was identified at an early age for his capability and wisdom, and was adopted by Antonius Pius in order to put him in the line for succession for emperor. Marcus was known generally for his wisdom in ruling, and assured that Antonius Pius' biological son served as co-emperor. His time of rule was marked with constant war and pestilence. Almost immediately he had to deal with war from the Parthians and then immediately following with the invading Germanic tribes. Rome at the time was also ravaged with what was known as the Antonine Plague, which eventually claimed his life. Marcus Aurelius gave us his diary, Meditations, which stands as essential reading in understanding Stoic philosophy. Additional Stoics that we know that served in the military were Cato the Younger, who was a famous Roman senator, who fought against Julius Caesar. Scipio Africanus, the younger, the conqueror of Carthage, and Publius Rutilius Rufus. So what are the tenets of this philosophy, Stoicism? Well, philosophy is divided into three parts, and Stoicism is no different. And these three parts are logic, physics, and ethics. Logic is the way to determine the reality of your perceptions of the world. Physics is an understanding of the structures of the natural world, and ethics is the study of how to live one's life. The foundation of Stoicism is the belief that the pursuit of virtue is the only thing that will lead to happiness. But what does that mean? Virtue, as defined by, the Stoic, by Stoic philosophy, is closer defined as excellence. All things can have an excellence and thus a virtuous existence. For Stoic philosophy, this virtue was broken down into what was called the cardinal virtues. These cardinal virtues were defined as wisdom, justice, temperance, and courage. Practical wisdom and or prudence encompasses the putting together of all virtues and is the ability to know what is good and what is bad to know what should and shouldn't be done, the ability to rationally discern things that are indifferent, and of those indifference, what are preferred. Justice, the ability to deal in a just way with ourselves and with the world around us, the duty to act with the world with morality, fairness, and excellence. Temperance, also known as self-discipline, this involves self-awareness to the things get, that can enslave us through desire, pleasure, and addiction, and actively avoid them. Courage, or fortitude, is quite simply the ability to conquer fear, pain, and discomfort. Other fundamental aspects of Stoic philosophy is, is, is something that we refer to as the dichotomy of control or knowing what is within your control and what is not. Quoting Epictetus, some things are in our control and others are not. Things which are in our control are opinion, pursuit, desire, aversion, and in a word, whatever are our, our own actions. Things not in our control are our body, our property, our reputation, command, and in a word, whatever are not our own actions. So the recognition of what is within our control being largely our faculties of judgment and action, and those things outside of our control being everything else. The concept of things outside of our control is what is known as an external or something that is indifferent, and while some things that are external to our control may be preferred than others, desiring things outside of one's control is not something a Stoic would see 
as a path to well-being. Many secondary Stoic philosophical points are a springboard from this, such as death being inevitable and unescapable. And so the Stoic does not live to avoid death, but live with full acceptance of death so that they can live well. Stoics believed that with a complete acceptance of death, one could embrace the present moment with the fullest attention. A famous quote by Seneca was, People are frugal in guarding their personal property, but as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are the most wasteful the one thing, of, of the one thing which it is right to be stingy. A Stoic understands that time is their most valuable commodity. Stoics believe that evil is the result of people who do not have proper judgment. Some other cornerstones of Stoic philosophy are belief in living in accordance with nature, which is probably best described as living with self-awareness and making the best use of one's talent, opportunities, and faculties to properly treat with the world. Love of fate. More simply, the ability to accept one's life. There is simply nothing further from one's control at this moment than where one is at this time, and so coming to complete acceptance to one's present state, and even appreciating it as the most logical path to making wise decisions for one's future. Also is the belief that the universe and the world moves forward and evolves in a rational way, and humans are a part of this underlying order. So in order to build effective resilience in our soldiers, we need to teach them the ability to endure stress without being overwhelmed by events. We know this capability exists and has historical precedence with the development of the same techniques that inspired the development of modern cognitive behavioral therapy techniques. These techniques can be maximized to address the issues that are currently affecting our military personnel. We have succeeded in training our military personnel to be the most technical, efficient, and battle-capable soldiers in the world. But we have failed in doing what we can to arm them with the framework to conquer the mental and emotional baggage that comes with this. As a result, we are dealing with a pandemic of suicide, homelessness, and addiction from a segment of society who have the experiences to give the most to society when they separate from the military and as they are serving in the military. There's a great opportunity to maximize the programs for developing of resilience in our soldiers. We're happy to introduce you today to many experts in the fields relating directly to Stoicism that will have some very interesting things to say about Stoicism and resilience training and its development. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Thank you very much.